first at four, the University of Michigan settles a sexual misconduct lawsuit, but this case wasn't about money, what the university has promised to do. Also, President Biden's new promise to Ukraine, more money, welcoming refugees, and his new comments on the potential for chemical attacks against those in Ukraine. Plus, here's Paul. Yeah, hey, Karen, the unsettled weather pattern is going to continue. And just adding insult to injury, we have colder air on the way as well. I have a complete forecast straight ahead. Millions of dollars of federal funding coming to Michigan's 14th district. Just how much money will this district get and what's it all for? Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at four, the investigation into that drive-by shooting death of a seven-year-old girl has now led to an arrest and a search for another suspect. Maria Jackson was shot on March 18th as she came home from school with her mom, her sister, and her cousins. Police believe the shooting in Pontiac was gang-related. Today, the Oakland County Sheriff says the suspected shooter has been arrested and is being held on unrelated charges. Police are seeking warrants on several new charges, including first-degree murder. Deputies also looking for this Pontiac teenager this afternoon who's already been charged in Jackson's murder. There's a $10,000 reward for information leading to the arrest of Juwan McDonald. Investigators believe he was behind the wheel of that SUV that drove past Jackson's family as the gunman was firing. If you can help, call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-SPEAK-UP. Tipsters remain anonymous. The teenager accused in the Oxford school shooting was back in court today to review whether he belongs in the Oakland County Jail. Attorneys for 15-year-old Ethan Crumbly have argued he should be in a juvenile facility, and that question is reviewed every 30 days. So the judge again said the teen should stay in the jail. Today's hearing also dealt with plans for the teenager's continuing education behind bars. The prosecution and defense are working on a few options to make that happen. University of Michigan making a promise to do better when it comes to preventing sexual misconduct on campus. It's all part of a settlement in a lawsuit brought by a U of M senior, Josephine Graham. She wasn't seeking any money, but was trying to force changes at the university. As part of the deal, the school will create and pay for a coordinated community response team to monitor how the university handles sexual misconduct claims. The school has weathered a series of scandals, including claims that hundreds of men were sexually assaulted by a campus doctor. That separate case was recently settled for $490 million. Another star witness has offered testimony in the trial of four men accused of plotting to kidnap Governor Whitmer. Caleb Franks from Waterford has pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit kidnapping. He says the target was the governor. Today, Franks testified he joined the group and wanted to move forward with the plot, hoping to get shot by law enforcement during the attack. Today, another witness who took a plea deal was grilled by defense attorneys. Ty Garvin admitted defendant Brandon Caserta from Canton did not take part in building firearms or making explosives with him. We'll have more testimony from the trial when you join us tonight at 6. Okay, so let's shift to our first forecast. Looks like we're going to be kind of in a stuck situation. We've got clouds overhead, and that's not going to go away for the next two days. Paul Gross standing by with what we can look forward to. Paul? Yeah, hey, Karen. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, the unsettled pattern is going to continue. We're not only going to see that, but we see cooler temperatures coming in as well. And by the way, that introduces the chance for some uh, wet snowflakes. We'll talk about that coming up in about 10, 15 minutes. But right now, most of us are dry. Could be a couple of sprinkles, northern Livingston County, Genesee County. But the bulk of the shower activity is off to the west. That's going to initially increase as it heads eastward tonight. But then it's going to start to fall apart a bit as it comes into southeast Michigan. So we are going to get some showers during the overnight period. But right now, we're dry for most of us. Temps generally in the 40s. We do have 50 over at Metro, but notice how breezy it is in some spots. Metro is at 22 miles per hour. Also Adrian at 20 miles per hour. So heading through the evening forecast, the best shower chance is to the north and west. Many of us will remain dry. Temps just slowly falling through the 40s. We'll be back with the rest of the forecast through the chilly weekend. Just a few minutes, Karen. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Paul. President Joe Biden is in Europe right now trying to send a message to Vladimir Putin about the price Russia will continue to pay for refusing to stop its invasion of Ukraine. This afternoon, the president talked about new steps he's taking and concerns about chemical weapons. Kimberly Gill with the latest in the newsroom with more from the president's trip. Kim?
Karen, good afternoon. While Russia continues its attacks on Ukrainian cities, much of the world's focus shifted to a series of summits between NATO allies, the G7, and the European Union. During his news conference, President Biden made one thing very clear. Western allies are digging in and standing together against Vladimir Putin. NATO has never, never been more united than it is today. Putin is getting exactly the opposite of what he intended to have as a consequence of going into Ukraine. President also announced $1 billion in humanitarian assistance to countries affected by Russia's invasion. He says the United States will accept 100,000 Ukrainian refugees with the emphasis on reuniting families. Also, America and its allies are slapping more sanctions on 400 Russian lawmakers, oligarchs, and businesses that profit from the war in Ukraine. Biden continues to refuse to create a no-fly zone over Ukraine or move any Soviet-era planes from Poland. The president was asked if he's seen evidence Putin might use chemical weapons in the war and if the West would respond with force. Here's his answer. You know, on the first question, I can't answer that. I'm not going to give you intelligence data, number one. Number two, we would respond. We would respond if he uses it. The nature of the response would depend on the nature of the use. Ukraine's president told NATO members his country needs more weapons, tanks, and military planes. Late today, Ukraine accused Moscow of using force to move 400,000 people from their country into Russia. The Kremlin says those who relocated wanted to go to Russia. We'll have more from Europe when you join us tonight. For Local 4 News at 5. Until then, Karen, we'll send it back to you. All right. We appreciate it. Thank you, Kim. Confirmation hearings for Judge Kentanji Brown Jackson wrapped up today with testimony from legal experts. Now, Jackson is hoping to become the first black woman on the United States Supreme Court. The chair of the American Bar Association called the judge an outstanding, excellent, and superior nominee. But the Attorney General of Alabama repeated Republican concerns. Jackson has been too soft on crime during her time on the bench. The Senate Judiciary Committee is expected to take its vote on confirmation on April 4th. Some local communities have something to celebrate this afternoon thanks to an influx of federal funding from Washington, D.C. Today, Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence announced millions of dollars to support projects in her district. Kim DiGiulio was there for the big celebration and to see who that money will help. Six million dollars of federal funding all going towards community projects, projects like fixing water systems, funding hospitals and fixing up parks like this one. Veterans Memorial Park, home of the historic Hamtramck Stadium. So once again, I want to say thank you for bringing home the bacon. We are going to put it in the pan, fry it up. U.S. Representative Brenda Lawrence bringing home a whole lot of bacon also known as money, for her district for 10 community projects. Our appropriation is $1.1 million. How much money did you guys get? $653,000. That's $653,000 going towards something crucial at Veterans Park. Men's and women's and handicapped restrooms at the park, no more porta potties. That's what we're excited about. We need this money. We don't have the funds to do this on our own. So being able to get this from a federal level is amazing because it means that we're going to be able to benefit the whole community. Hamtramck City Council members tell me it's a big job, but adding real bathrooms to this park will attract more people to this destination, the Hamtramck Stadium. But we believe this is a national treasure, one of five parks in the country that have a historic black, the Negro League Stadium. And so for us, it's going to be attracting people from all over the world to Hamtramck. And they say the stadium will be the initial attraction, but the city will keep people coming back. We are the international city in Michigan, most diverse in Michigan, and we welcome everyone there. And we have a lot to offer the world, and so it's time to show it off. And the goal is to show off the city and those new bathrooms as soon as possible. We've got the drawings. It's time to put it out to bid, attract contractors to this, and work together to get this done. We hope by next year this time that we'll either be building or in those bathrooms, uh, flushing a toilet, washing our hands. Hamtramck City Council says with these new bathrooms, people are going to be able to stay here for even longer, enjoying this historic gem in Hamtramck for hours at a time. Reporting from Hamtramck, I'm Kim DiGiulio, Local 4.
really is a gem. Love their excitement. Thank you so much, Kim. Each community representative also gave a big thanks to Congresswoman Lawrence, who brought this funding to town and said how much they'll miss her. Lawrence recently announced she won't be running in the next election.